naming binary compounds. We can name binary compounds once we know uh, some of the names and symbols for the elements and know which ones are metals and which ones are nonmetals. A binary compound means that um, the compound consists of two elements only. So the binary stands for two elements. And when we talk about salts, we're going to talk about a compound that it consists of a metal plus a nonmetal. And actually, um, when you say the word salt, this is a generic type term. When you think about salt, you probably think about table salt, which is uh, sodium chloride, which this is a representation of. Um, but there are many other kinds of salt. So salt really has a lot larger meaning than just table salt. Salts can also consist of positive ions and negative ions. And in the next section, we will be talking about some of those polyatomic ions that we need to deal with. Now, some of the um, characteristics of a salt is that it is a crystalline solid with high melting points. Um, salts don't have to be white like sodium chloride, but many salts are white. Many of the salts are soluble, and if they are, they dissolve as ions. For example, NaCl dissolves as sodium ions and chloride ions. The sodium ions are the little gray ones, and the chloride ions are the, represented by the larger green ones. If they dissolve as ions, they are called electrolytes. And when you think about that LYTE, you can think about the electrolytes that you would find in something like Pedialyte, which is spelled with an L-Y-T-E, or the electrolytes in Gatorade. Now, one of the other important things is that the formula represents only a ratio of the ions. Um, it does not uh, represent a specific NaCl discrete molecule. It just tells you that in this crystal, we have a one-to-one -one ratio of sodium and chloride. Um, in the next part, we will look at um, binary molecular compounds. And I just have a list of some of their characteristics here. But we will go over that um, in the next video. Now, again, binary salts are two elements, a metal plus a nonmetal or a positive ion and a negative ion. And when they name them, you should all be familiar with what NaCl is called. It's sodium chloride, more familiar as table salt, as a common name. But when you look at what you've done with um, Na and Cl, You've taken the metal name and just used the metal name, sodium. But then with the nonmetal, you took the root of the nonmetal, the chlor, and you added the suffix IDE. And it's sort of when you do that, it sort of makes it come together as one piece rather than saying sodium chlorine while you're saying two different elements. Sodium chloride sort of blends those two pieces together. So when you look at some of these um, compounds, the important thing is, is this is all you are going to do. The fact that there are subscripts is not going to be found in the name. For example, this first one is simply aluminum chloride. And we have magnesium chloride. We have sodium sulfide. barium oxide and aluminum sulfide. Notice there is no indication in the name what the ratio is that you will find. So again, the name tells the elements only. It doesn't tell you the ratio. It doesn't tell you the subscripts. And you cannot go directly from the name to the formula. In the next section, we will learn how to do that. But we're going to start with naming some simple compounds.
where that is not necessary. And again, this is a comparison between the salts and the molecular compounds that we'll look at later. One of the very important things is that salts are electrolytes and our molecular compounds will be non-electrolytes. Electrolytes allow water to conduct electricity. Pure water is not an electrical conductor, but you add just a little bit of a salt to it that dissolves, and you've got a conductor. With these binary salts, we're going to be talking about ionic bonding, where we are going to transfer electrons um, from the metal to the non-metal. But you will always know, to, know that you're going to get ready for a salt because the compound will start with a metal and you will not use the prefixes that we'll talk about in the next video. So here are some examples and I'm going to leave this up for um, a little bit so you can look at these and go down through and think about what the names would be. Again, they all start with the name of the metal followed by the nonmetal with IDE on the end of it. And on the next slide, which you can pause to check, and you might want to actually pause right here and sit down and actually write all of these out before you go further. Because as you go further, I'm going to put all of the um, names up, all the answers to this. So here we go. Um, you'll notice I have one crossed out. It's because I wrote the formula incorrectly, so I just eliminated that one from my list. Um, and so, if you want to pause the, um, if you want to pause here, you can just stop and take a look at these. Hopefully, you can read them. Um, but there are some of the ionic compounds. So again using the naming system starts with the metal and there you go